for Schmall and Hall Tickville, we haven't done that yet. If you want to run that. <laughs> Either one. Either one? Yeah. <laughs> finish Zechariah here in about 15 minutes. This is another miracle. Yeah. It's been over a year we've been in the great prophet of Zechariah, the Lord remembers. Amen. But we left off, we're on verse 20 of the last chapter, and so there's only two verses left on that day. Holy to the Lord will be inscribed on the bells of the horses and the cooking pots in the Lord's house will be like the sacred bowls in front of the altar. And then every pot in Yerushalayim and Yehuda will be Kadosh, holy to the yod heh seva the Lord Almighty, and all who come to sacrifice will take some of the pots and cook in them. And on that day, there will no longer be a Canaanite in the house of the Lord Almighty. So Zechariah finishes off Earlier last week we saw with the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot, 
the great celebration that we're looking forward to. And we, we had fun with that last week. But then it ends with the word kadosh twice, which is holy, as you know, in Hebrew. Holy does, does not actually mean righteous, although it, it's included in there. But holy means there's nothing else like it. You can't compare anything to holy because it's in a category of its own. It's totally unique, holy. So it's separate from everything else. Uh, this is really what holy means, and there is no one like our God, and so He is Kadosh. And, and so here we have this word again, uh, Kadosh, the bells of the horses and the cooking pots in the temple. So every pot in Jerusalem and Judah will be like the sacred bowls that were in the front of the altar, and the sacred bowls in the front of the altar, I might have mentioned last week, I don't remember where I stopped, but those were the bowls that used to collect the blood for the removal of sin. And so these are as sacred as you can get when you're talking about the blood because they were a picture then, of course, of His blood. And that is sacred to the uttermost. Amen? Amen. And uh, so these were the bowls used to collect the blood of the sacrifices. So now the one who gave His own blood to take away the sin of the people is will be the ruling king in that day and he is the sacrifice right and he will be the ruling king over the whole world and all who sacrifice will come and cook with these holy to the lord pots and and so the idea is that everything is just holy now as holy as the high priest's forehead was in the days earlier remember it had kadosh uh, la, uh, uh, Kadosh la Yodevavhe, holy to the Lord. So, so this uh, concept now that we come to with everyone who will come and sacrifice. Now, th this is a struggle for the church. Uh, it has been a struggle in the church, and it will be even more soon when Israel starts animal sacrifices again and then it will continue to be uh, a theological issue uh, to think about because we know that the sacrifices continue through the whole millennium so the church cannot handle this because they want to uh, say Yeshua died and that is the sacrifice and now there is no need of sacrifice which is partially true but not totally scriptural so where we, where we have the problem here is the church wants to undo everything physical, especially when it's Israeli. And so what you have here with the uh, church not being interested in the rebuilding of the temple, it's a extension of, and I'll be nice about this, it is an extension of replacement theology. And, and so we have to be clear in our theology that God wants the spiritual and the physical because it's clear in the word of God that he does both now we're not attached to a spiritual Israel when we go to Israel it's dirt it's physical you can walk on it when we were at Shiloh where the Mishkan was for hundreds of years the old Mark told pick up some of the dirt and put it in your hand. This is where the, the tabernacle stood for so long. You're on holy ground. It wasn't spiritual ground. It was physical ground. See? And, and so if you're going to be attached to Israel, if you're going to believe that God is not done with Israel, then you are not replacement. But then as soon as you say, and Israel's temple, oh, no, 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 we can't have that. Mm -hmm. Because now we're the temple. So that's just like saying... God is done with Israel because we're Israel now. We're God's people. And God is done with the temple because we're the temple. See, he's not done with Israel and he's not done with the temple either. So you have, you have both sides, but the church cannot handle the physical side, mostly because it's Israeli. But even people that are attached to Israel struggle with the idea of sacrifices being done again. But you've got to read the book. 
And there is a reason that there are sacrifices starting up again. And there is a reason for the Habet, Hamakdash, to be started up again. One is to honor God's name because God put his name on Mount Zion forever and ever. And we are supposed to honor his name. And so the thing that's there now is not honoring the name of Hashem. It is cursing the name of Hashem. And so you build a temple on Temple Mount to honor God's name because he put his name there forever. In physical. It's a physical place. Okay. So now we have these sacrifices started up. And, and let me say, and, and how troubling this is for people, uh, because Messiah is the final sacrifice and we are born again with his sacrifice. But but here's the deal. They're just going to have to get over this physical part being a problem for them. Um, God wants to see his house. God wants people to come to the house and honor him. Okay, They don't come to the church to honor him. They come to Jerusalem to honor him. The church is not Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a physical place. Some of you may have been there. <laughs> you walk on her streets of stone, and it's physical. And God said, I am burning with jealousy for this place. So, so here we have, to, we have to deal with the physical is also involved here. And, and so God desires the physical third temple to give him honor. And, and, and the sacrifices have always done, and let me tell you this, when Israel starts up the sacrifice, the sacrificial system of the Levitical priesthood has only ever always just done one thing. And that's preach the gospel. Now, church, are you opposed to the preaching of the gospel? For 1,500 years, the sacrifices preached the gospel. Do you think they could continue to preach the gospel? Yes. Yes. The most recognized symbol in the world is something being sacrificed on a, on a stick with a crossbar on it. Mm -hmm. What is that? It's a sacrifice. It preaches the gospel. Right? And so they preach the gospel and, and, and they will start up soon for Israel. And when the animal sacrifices started for Israel, as it says, we're, what we're dealing with here, the, the temple is rebuilt. And even in the millennium, then there are sacrifices being done. But, but even before the millennium starts, they are doing the sacrifices. And this prepares Israel, who does not listen to John 3.16, by the way, But they listen to the Torah. And the Torah requires sacrifice for sin. Now, we're not talking about rabbinic Judaism anymore. Now we're talking about Bible Judaism being started up in a few years at the temple, even before the temple's rebuilt, possibly on Temple Mount. And it will prepare the last group, people group Amen. on earth mm -hmm. for the gospel so we can have us our millennium. Mm -hmm. For God to have his millennium. Woo. Amen. So they will start to offer sacrifices and 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 Kaim has talked about this. Of course he uses the offering word because he doesn't believe John 3.16. <laughs> but he will. Zach 12 hasn't happened yet. But But when they see the animal being offered they will read Yom Kippur and all this. That it is for the removal of sin. And, and if, if you've ever had sin, see, then you need a sacrifice. That's Bible. There's a guy in here working, and, uh, and he wanted to know, he goes, so, so what do you think about the gay thing? And I go, well, gays can come here. And, and uh, we love gays. And, and, but uh, in a short period of time, we would have to deal with them to repent. And he goes, but I can't see how God would create people with gay tendencies to burn in hell. <laughs> and see, I have to explain to him, the heaven or hell thing has nothing to do with behavior. 
It has nothing to do with whether you're straight or... Being straight doesn't get you to heaven. <laughs> Being a gay doesn't get you to hell. That's right. There's only one thing that makes a difference between heaven and hell, and that's if you've got a blood sacrifice. Amen. Now, if it is dependent on behavior, you're all going to hell. <laughs> You need a sacrifice, not behavior. Now, sanctification is another matter. Behavior isn't the issue. It's whether or not you have a Savior. And so there'll be a million gays in heaven. And there'll be millions of straights in hell, you see. And because that's not what it's about. But this is the issue here. There will be the gospel preached again with sacrifice. Especially Judaism, rabbinic Judaism, has been in the works mode since A.D. 72 with Zaki. So then the sacrifices will continue throughout the millennium for the same reason. Still preaching the gospel in verse 16. Even into the eternal order after the millennium, God has presented, remember, uh, in Revelation... What is the final revelation of Yeshua? The king is still into eternal future in Rev 21 and 22, which is after the millennium is over. It is still the Lamb of God. Because it is still the, 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 the uh, presentation of God being as the Lamb. And why is it the presentation as the Lamb? Because the Lamb equals the love. It is the love of God. So we don't need to be concerned about the continuing sacrifices or the rebuilt temple. It will be beautiful to us. <laughs> yes, it will be beautiful to us. And it will be beautiful to Him, the one who created the system, Yeshua. And in the end, it is saying just one thing. God is love. God is love. And this is the sacrifice. As you know, the first place that love is in the Bible is the Akedah, the binding of Yitzhak. Take your only son, the son whom you, Ahava, love and sacrifice him. The context of love has to include sacrifice. It is based on sacrifice because if you say to your wife that you love her and you mistreat her the entire marriage, then you have not manifest love in any way. You can't say it and manifest it, you have to give up to manifest love. This is for your marriage, this is with your parents and children, it is, it's with everything. You have to give up to manifest love. So he was sacrificed because of the love. Amen. So the last sentence of our great book is, there will no longer be a Canaanite in the Lord's house. And some places your Bible might say merchant because the Canaanites were known to be merchants. But Canaanite here, you may as well, don't, don't try to have to translate this away. It says Canaanite in Hebrew. And Canaanites were known to be pagan idol worshipers. Okay, so they were merchants. I'm a merchant, but I ain't no pagan idol worshiper, okay? So just leave the Hebrew the way it is. It's a Canaanite because it's a pagan idol worshiper, okay? Glad we got that straight now. All right, but it, uh, the, the book finish, finishes with there will be no more defilement in the house of God. And that, that is how, and, and, and it is, how does the book end? The temple. The temple. There will never again be a defilement. What has just ended when this takes place? The abomination of desolation, spoken by Daniel the prophet. It will never again happen again. And as Yeshua said, my house shall be a prayer, a house of prayer for all nations. This will be true. And that is how the book ends. Thank you, Zachariah, for your revelation. Woo! Yeah. Oh, man. What a book, huh? You remember how it started? Uh, uh, return to me and I will return to you. Is there any better message for this nation today? Then return. I'll return if you just come to me. And that and he probably doesn't even want you to go a mile. If you just take a couple steps towards me, please. Will you please? America, just take a couple steps towards him. Oh, and he will return. Oh Lord God. 
return to me and I will return to you. And then we had the vision which God says, I am very angry with the nations that have mistreated Israel. That was a second. He says, then he says, I am very jealous for Jerusalem and I'm burning with jealousy for Jerusalem and, and Zion. And then we had this great phrase. I love this. The Lord rebukes you, ha Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebukes you. <laughs> right? Because that's where he chose. Jerusalem was chosen by God to be his place. Right? right. So that's who you're dealing with here. The one who chose Jerusalem is the one that's rebuking the devil. Right? So we choose Jerusalem too. Yes. As a congregation, as individuals. We have all chosen Yerushalayim. Be special to us because it's special to him. The name was put there. The name represents the person, the person of God. It says in Zechariah earlier, my heart and my eyes will always be here forever. Yeah, you want to get to God's heart? You shall lie. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebukes you, Satan. And then we had all the great branch prophecy, the Netzer and, and the Tzomach. Remember the Netzer and the Tzomach? And, 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 uh, uh, which is also... Uh, combined with Isaiah prophecies. The branch is, is, is Messiah. No, man. The, the stump of Jesse, the son of David, the Davidic covenant, it all came out of the branch prophecy. Then we had the golden lampstand followed with, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Is this one of the most famous verses we have in the Bible? We saw the revelation of the two olive trees. Uh, priest and king anointings. Remember the ones that stand, me, which which comes up in in the two witnesses in Rev. And then there was this woman in the basket, which is evil, and she is removed. And remember, we had the stark word. Remember the stark word is is the love word. And we, the the idea that storks carry babies comes from this verse in Zechariah. That was too much. I love that because storks are considered the most loving animal to its its babies in in the world. And so you have storks carrying little diapers with babies in it. <laughs> but that comes from Zechariah, right? And and uh, chapter 7 is against religion. Chapter 8 is the rebuilding of the temple. And the goyim all of a sudden taking hold of a Jew zitzit. Ten goyim. Yeah. We have heard that God is with you. Amen. I mean, when I first started reading the Bible, I thought this is a, in, an Israeli book. <laughs> and then we had more prophecies we had the first coming on the donkey then the second coming at the trumpet and then we had the worthless shepherds that paid the 30 pieces of silver which was back to the first company uh, coming and chapter 12 then the great chapter of, of Rev uh, Jerusalem a cup of trembling or fear for all nations and the great salvation of, of Zion uh, the fountain that removes all sin in the first part of chapter 13 and then back to the first coming strike strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered and then I will gather the surrounding nations to Yerushalayim and we have the final battle and the return of Messiah his feet standing on the Mount of Olives and then the Lord will be king over the whole earth. Amen. Sukkot. Yes. A thousand years. Amen. Amen. So I'll do one message next week on, on uh, um, Armageddon Word. And then I'm not sure what we're going to do. But thank you for coming to Greeley with us. Yeah. And making this congregation continue on. And I don't know what the Lord has all for us. But, but I feel there's... Hadashah uh, Ma'od, new, new things coming, right? Lots of new things coming. But it's because of you guys, though, that, that everything continues on. And so thank you, thank you for, very much for, for supporting uh, the ministry here to uh, support Israel. And, and remember that I started this congregation 25 years ago because... I wanted it to be a place for the presence of the Lord, for praise and worship, and for it to be Jewish roots. And then I thought, and I wanted some good Bible teaching. I think we're taking care of that pretty good. Amen. So, so thank you, Lord. I humble. We humble ourselves before you and say thank you today, Lord God. And, and I, I say, Lord, that, that whatever you have for us, we want, we want it all. So don't let us mess it up. 
Don't let Marty mess it up. Because we want it all. We want all we can get. But mostly, Lord, we just have to have your presence here. Your presence, Lord God. Yavarechatha Adonai v'yishmarecha. Yeir Adonai panavalecha v'chu necha. Yisa Adonai panavalecha v'yoseim l'ka shalom. B'shem Yeshua HaMashiach, Sar HaShalom, Amen and Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you and make His face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you and lift His countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus the Messiah, Amen and Amen. amen.